And Jokey, um, rejection of this um, this dominant morality um, that debt should always be repaid was um, was quite central to the the movement in the in 1980s and, and 1990s to um, cancel the developing country debt in the global south. Um, a lot of people in this room um, were part of the, the Jubilee movement as a part of that, but I think quite a few people um, weren't and are new to debt campaigning. Um, could, you, um, could you share a, a bit about the, well, first of all about the movement and, and its victories, but I think particularly um, about uh, this process by which um, campaigners in the Global South rejected that dominant morality and, and how that was important for the, the strengthening of the movement? Uh, thank you. I also want to um, express my thanks for the invitation to be here and um, to the audience for showing up. I'm, I have to say I'm quite impressed um, by the turnout, but I also think that um, the reality as it is for many people around the world makes it necessary for all of us to begin to or to continue to pay attention to the question of debt. Um, I think that um, in some quarters, uh, people believe that debt is done um, because uh, from their perspective, debt was a problem of the global south. And now that in Europe, in, in, um, in countries that before were only on one side of the equation, this is, um, becoming a reality, um, it is again being revived. So I do want to thank you and, I, um, um, and, and say that what is happening in Europe, what is happening in the UK um, comes on the heels of a crisis that in the global south um, for decades has been eating away at people's lives and, uh, and people's dignity as it were. Um, I want to start with a story. I, I, um, I used to live and work in Washington, D.C., in the belly of the beast, we called it, and uh, worked for the 50 Years is Enough Network. It was a campaign that had been founded in 1994. Um, around the 50th anniversary of the World Bank and the IMF. And um, in a way, it was a very uh, scrappy campaign, but very uh, effective. We were fighting and we were campaigning against these monster institutions. And they came about to pay attention to us and to listen to what we were saying, at least um, from a, a public relations perspective. But, we engaged with them for on many, many fora in many different kinds of ways. And um, with the Jubilee campaign, which of course has this uh, Judeo-Christian uh, basis and the, and the concept, um, there was inside the World Bank uh, headquarters in Washington, there was a group, it was called the Friday Morning Group, and these were people of faith who worked at the World Bank and had this bref breakfast um, every Friday and they would have speakers and different kinds of, of people that they would invite. In my almost 10 years, I was invited there once um, and I took along a friend. When I, I'm from Kenya and when I started working in Washington, somebody said to me, never go into a meeting by yourself. You must always come with somebody else to um, to back you up, to be your witness, to uh, to help you uh, and to uh, keep you company, and sometimes to give you courage. So I asked a colleague uh, who was the chairperson of the religious working group on the World Bank and the IMF. These were the faith-based organizations that were part of the uh, 50 Years Is Enough campaign. So we went. Um, to the Friday morning group. They met at breakfast, and it was, um, I don't know, maybe the word is ridiculous to describe kind of the spread that uh, was laid out before us and given the topic. I, I, I don't know what they discussed on other Friday mornings, but that day was about third world debt, and um, I was embarrassed by sort of the bounty that was put in front of us, and I, I think I only just had some juice, but 
um, we had a very interesting conversation. And um, I don't remember very much about it, but I remember an exchange that my, my, my friend and colleague Marie had with one of the, um, of the people from the World Bank. And it was, um, the, the group was former World Bank employees and current World Bank employees. And so some people even who had moved out from being staff and were now consulting at the World Bank because they sort of had this revolving door thing happening. So there was an exchange with the guy who identified himself as a former staff member who was now a consultant. And he went on to say, as we talked about the problem with the loans and uh, the projects that the World Bank was, had been doing in many countries, he went on to say that he worked on many projects and they were good projects and they, there were problems that had developed. And of course, you know, it wasn't his fault or the World Bank's fault. It was the fault of the governments and the country and the people, wherever the projects were. I don't actually remember the details. And he can swear up and down that each and every um, contract and each and every uh, loan was legal. And so uh, we, we had had a wide ranging conversation that included discussions of corruption, but of course corruption was only on one side, not on the side of the World Bank or any people who were employed by the World Bank, but they met, they practically met nothing but corrupt people on the other side. So he went on and on and um, uh, my friend Marie is, I used to, we used all to joke actually that we wanted to be her when we grew up. She's very um, calm and very smart and she's one of those people who can, you know, if I get upset, I'll shout and jump up and down. Marie gets very quiet. And so this guy is going on and on and saying how everything was legal. And because we had been having a conversation saying that since the institution we were told over and over could not be held accountable, that perhaps it was time that the employees of the institution were held accountable. And uh, so the guy said, well, I, everything I did, uh, every, um, document was in order and everything was legal. And Marie turns to him and says, well, it was legal, but was it moral and was it just? And you could have heard a pin drop in this room. Um, and the question was never answered, just to be clear. But I think that um, the, the, the idea that the system of debt, especially in the globe that affects the global south, that's what I've worked on for a long time and that's probably why I'm here, that it, that it has any morality is beyond my comprehension because the things that um, the problems that it creates for countries, for communities, for individuals is beyond the pale, is beyond anything that uh, we would consider reasonable. In the Jubilee South campaign, one of the things that um, the campaign was really successful in was telling that story, telling the story of what it means. You refer to the education, to the health, to the environment, or to, to the lives of women, to the lives of communities, to the lives of, of countries, what the debt meant in that sense. But um, the Jubilee South campaign also did something which was to question e even the language, whereby uh, it was about creditors and debtors. It was um, about owing and paying. It was about monetary considerations that did not take into account any number of other costs that um, were associated with the debt. So the, the Jubilee South campaign uh, partnered with the, uh, the Jubilee campaigns in the North to say, this is how you are looking at it, but this is how we see it, this is how we live it, this is how we experience it. And um, there's a lot of things that, uh, that I can say about the Jubilee South campaign, but one of the questions that was constantly asked and continues to be asked is about who owes who. 
um, if you're just talking about the monetary debt, then perhaps the balance sheet would show one thing. But if you talked about the historical debt, the ecological debt, um, the social debt, um, then it changes that dynamic and it changes how the, the debt is considered. The Jubilee campaign was founded, the, the, the Jubilee 2000 campaign, as it was called, was founded, um, in fact, years after um, a number of countries and, and campaigns around the Global South had been campaigning on the issue of debt in Mexico, in the Philippines, in places like Nigeria and Ghana. Um, this, the, the campaigning against debt had been going on, but around the 2000, uh, the Jubilee 2000 campaign, it was a time when a lot of people around the world t took on this, um, this question of debt, and uh, many of them have continued to do that. And as I said, I'm actually thrilled to see a room full of people coming to talk about debt, because for some people, the chapter was sort of closed, and it's reopening again, and this consideration is really important. I want to end by saying this, that as long as debt is considered something about money and not about the impact and the effects that it has on people's lives, um, we won't get very far. Because what you were saying about the morality and about people needing to pay what they owe in terms of money, then you know you, there are not very many people who find any space to fudge that. You owe a hundred dollars, you owe a hundred pounds, you pay a hundred pounds. The question for Jubilee South, the question for all of us, in fact, and the question that I think people in the United Kingdom and people across Europe and other countries in the US are beginning to ask, I pay back that hundred pounds, that hundred dollars, at what cost? Because it's not just about the hundred dollars, the cost of the hundred dollars, it is the impact that it has on the quality of life, on the dignity, on the future, on the heritage, on the environment, on so many other things, at what cost? And as long as we are asking that question and we ask it equally about people in the South, people in the North, rich people, poor people, working people, the aristocracy, whoever, if we ask that question at what cost, then it changes the dynamic and it raises questions, moral questions, in fact. And I think that's where the morality comes. The morality for me is not about that I owe 10 pounds, must pay 10 pounds. The morality comes on this very issue of at what cost do I pay that? That's all for now.